Hi, my name is Paul Yip. I'm a product manager at IBM. And today I'm going to show you how to make disaster recovery for Hadoop easier with Spectrum Scale. So I'm going to start with a quick demo where I have two Hadoop clusters set up. One is in Washington, DC. The other is in Dallas. So these are 1300 miles apart. And these are hosted on IBM software pods. So here I've logged into both my clusters. Here's Washington, DC, and here's Dallas. Now, just to prove that they are actually physically separate apart, I'll get the IP addresses and do a quick lookup. And we can see for this IP address, we're located in Washington. Now I'll do the same on the Dallas cluster. And we can see that this IP address is located in Dallas, Texas. Now let's take a look at the file system. Now the directory that I'm going to focus on replicating is called data. Now we can see that except for some hidden system files, the two directories are identical. Now all my Washington DC data, I have on the local file system, some data which I'm going to load into Hive or Big SQL. Okay, so you can see it's just a CSV file. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upload this directory into my Hadoop cluster. I'm going to copy it to the data directory. And now I can see my data is now here. So now here we're looking at the web interface for Big SQL called DSM. And what we're going to do, I have this table created already. I'm just going to run this cache resync command to clear my cache. And then I can run this statement and see that I can see data from this table. Now I'm going to go over to my Dallas cluster where I also have DSM set up. And I'm going to run the same thing. Refresh my cache. Run my query. and we can see that the data is there. Now, while that demo seemed really simple and really short, there was a lot of advanced technology under the covers to efficiently replicate that data over 1300 miles between Washington and Dallas. And you saw that I loaded the data, I was able to query in Washington, and within a few moments, I was able to query the same data over in Dallas. Now, the thing I love most about Spectrum Scale is that it was POSIX. I was entering commands like Hadoop FSLS so that I could see the file system in Hadoop. But actually, because this is Spectrum Scale, I'll just show you one more thing. This directory, HadoopFS, is where my Hadoop file system is mounted. I can actually type regular ls commands to see the directory. And I can go to the data directory, and I can see the web orders directory. I can actually create another file. Now, on my Dallas system, I can go to the same directory. And I can see that my file called world.txt has been replicated over. So let's talk about this technology that you just saw. It's called Spectrum Scale or GPFS AFM. AFM stands for Active File Management. Now, what you saw was that there was a directory called HadoopFS. That's where my Hadoop was mounted. And I had directories. I had data one, but I'm showing here data one, data two, data three. These would be file sets. And file sets are simply folders of other folders and, and files. 
Replication is set up then at this file set level. And by using file sets, we can break up our file system into smaller chunks and manage those chunks more granularly. So for example, each file set can have different quotas, replication settings, or we can take snapshots at the file set level as opposed to taking a snapshot of the entire file system. I also want to mention that your choice of mount point is arbitrary. In my case, I was demonstrating it mounted as Hadoop FS, but it could also show up as slash GPFS or slash BIGPFS, depending on your configuration. So here in this picture then is my three file sets set up at my primary site and my secondary site. And you can see that the data one file set is replicating to the data one file set at the secondary site. Same thing for data two to data two and so on and so forth. Now by having different file sets, it allows me to set up different replication policies for different file sets because different applications may have different needs. Now, if you make your way through the AFM documentation, you're gonna see references to the term AFM home and AFM cache. Home is gonna be one side of the data and cache is gonna be the other side of the data. And which side is playing home or cache depends on your caching mode. And so the four caching modes that AFM supports are local update, read only, single writer and independent writer. And it's beyond the scope of this presentation to go into what those mean, but you can learn more by clicking on this link. I will mention, however, that for disaster recovery with AFM, the modes that will be used will have the behaviors of single writer or independent writer. Now, while AFM technology is not that new, the use of AFM for disaster recovery is fairly new. Customers were already using AFM for replication for data resiliency. So in 4.1.1, we added this notion of a primary and secondary role, added the ability to define RTO, or recovery time objective, and RPO, recovery point objectives, and also added formal failover and failback capabilities. So let's talk about the setup for this. The first thing we're gonna do is actually create file sets on each of the sites. So in this picture here, you see that on site one, I'm gonna create a file set called data one, and at site two, I'm gonna create the exact same file set called data one. They're both mounted on Hadoop FS. Now the command to create a file set is called MMCR file set. And we'll pass it some parameters, and these are flexible depending on what you need. But we will see here that with the independent writer or single writer mode that disaster recovery is going to require, the AFM target is going to be the remote site data one file set. And so what this means is that the primary site is actually going to be the cache, and it's going to have all the writes and updates that are happening. And it's going to push those changes to the secondary site. So secondary site actually is the role of home. And the AFM mode for this site is primary. We'll, be, we'll have an asynchronous delay of 15 seconds. What that means is as writes and updates are happening, we're gonna bunch them up into 15 second increments and send them over to the secondary. This allows us to do efficient batching of those changes. And then finally, the RPO target or recovery point objective is 15 minutes. And we're gonna see what GPFS and spectrum scale does underneath the covers with this RPO. On the secondary node, we again create the file set and we're going to give it parameters like AFM mode as secondary to indicate that its role is secondary and tell it who its primary is by providing the file set ID from the primary cluster. Once the file set is created, we link it into the file system. That is to say that the data one file set is mounted on Hadoop FS data one. You'll notice that we do this on the secondary site first. So the next step is to go back to the primary system and actually perform the final link step. And what this linking does again is takes that data file set that we created and mounts it onto the Hadoop file system. When we do this, a special initial snapshot is created called psnap0. And that becomes the baseline for both of these file systems. This is a peer-to-peer -peer snapshot that ensures that we have the same consistency points between the primary and the secondary site. So this peer-to-peer -peer snapshot is a really special feature that allows us to have the exact same consistency points between the primary and secondary sites. So for normal day-to-day -day operations, your applications are on the primary site and those applications are reading and writing to the primary. Meanwhile, there is the asynchronous replication going over to the secondary, your AFM home. Now remember that RPO setting we set, which was 15 minutes? What will happen is automatically AFM will perform these peer-to-peer -peer snapshots 
across both clusters at 15 minute intervals or whatever the RPO setting was. Now you can imagine over the course of normal operations, a lot of these peer-to-peer -peer snapshots are going to be created, in this case, four per hour. But these snapshots are fully managed by Spectrum Scale, and they will be cleaned up. Now to manage this environment, the command is AFMCTL. And just like other Spectrum Scale commands, of course it begins with MM. This command has a number of options available to it, but let me just take you through a couple of examples of how to use them. Now here we have pictured what happens when your primary site goes down. On the right-hand side, at site 2, we're going to run the command mmafmctl failover to secondary. And this failover to secondary will perform all the pending changes that are required to get the secondary up to speed to the last known peer snapshot. This gives us a consistency point. Then we can start up our applications to run on the secondary site. And so the applications are reading and writing to what we call this acting primary. Now at some point, the primary file system will become available again. And this may be from recovery of the original file system or creating a brand new file system from scratch. The first step to getting back to the primary is to run this mmafmctl fail back to primary. What this does is it puts it into read-only mode and starts to bring that system back to the last known consistency point based on the peer-to-peer -peer snapshots. Then we can start to run apply updates and depending on how much updates have happened since the disaster, we can run this multiple times uh, and leave our applications running on the secondary until that delta becomes smaller and smaller. At some point, the number of updates will be very, very small, and we should take the applications offline to stop any changes to the file system and run a final apply updates. Then we can run this fail back to primary step again to say stop, and that will take the primary file system out of read only and we can switch our applications back over to the primary site. On the secondary site, change the file set to change its role back to the secondary. And this completes the failback. So I hope you found this session interesting. And what I've done is I've put together a roadmap for you here if you want to learn more. If you haven't already seen the differences between HDFS and Spectrum Scale, check out this first YouTube link. These are all on my channel, so I hope you'll subscribe. And I've got some short links here to the documentation where you can learn more about AFM and disaster recovery with AFM. Thank you.